Well, <clears throat> greetings, and we're coming back to you again uh, with Is Jesus God? This is part two. It's under our Preaching Christ series, Is Jesus God? Uh, this is part two. Um, the reason for this teaching, number one, is a good sound teaching, and it's something that we all need to be established in in the Christian faith. And, um, well, by the way, this is uh, Bishop Rich Thomas from Redemption Apostolic International Network teaching this. Uh, the other reason that um, I felt the need to teach this again, I mean, this is something all Christians should be probably review and be, they need to be taught and founded in it, and then they need to review it and uh, get fresh faith in it by hearing it again at least once a year. But specifically why I uh, brought this teaching at this time is I see that there is a direct attack on the basic fundamentals of the faith that's in Jesus Christ in these days. Especially with the rise of what's called Chrislam and the rise of New Age infiltration in the church and what's called Chrislam, the mixing of Christianity with Islam. Um, it's very necessary, very needful, and important as a shepherd, amen, who's responsible and has to give an account to God to watch, uh, of, of watching the sheep and keeping out the wolves. It's important that this teaching be brought forth and uh, be uh, talked about again. Now, um, uh, Islam says they believe in one God and his name is Allah. And we've had a lot of main, even main, what we would call mainline and big church kind of people go and set themselves in agreement with them. That uh, they believe in the one God, like Islam, and the one God, and it's all the same one God. It is not the same one God. But uh, what I want to what I want to emphasize in this teaching right now is Jesus God. So we'll look at what the Bible really teaches about Him. And then when we compare the counterfeit Islam to it, we'll see that they're two different things. Who's called God? Who who the Quran calls the one God is different than who the Bible calls the one God. In fact, who the Bible calls the enemy, arch enemy of the one God is actually Allah. Well, all the boasts of Allah about himself our blasphemous boasts are negating that Jesus Christ is anything, negating that there is any Holy Spirit of God, and even taking the attributes of God the Father upon itself, as well as God the Son and God the Holy Spirit taking those attributes upon themselves. Now, there's a real heavy-duty teaching um, about the, the Trinity uh, in the sense of that uh, it's quite a challenge to grasp. So um, I'll, I'll get to that later on, and we'll teach that later on. But uh, because I really want to do a good job, I have some excellent, excellent uh, things laid out in the Hebrew on that. But I need to go through, and I need to look at a way to really simplify it and get it across, how that from the very beginning, uh, God declared, you know, the Trinity. So anyway, and I don't want to say too much because it's something that really you have to look at the Word and it's better that the Word by itself comprehends it. But it's all the way from the beginning, from Genesis itself is declared. And again, the Quran denies it. Now, um, when one denies the Son, they have neither the Father, the Bible says, the Apostle John said, the Holy Spirit said through the Word to us, and therefore, they deny that Jesus is God the Son. They deny that he is the begotten of God. And therefore, um, you know, they do not have the God of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's another God. It's something else, which is not a God. It's a deception. In fact, Allah boasts of himself. He's the greatest of all deceivers. But anyway, enough on that. And so we're going to continue with our message. That's just by way of introduction. Again, we need to be found, founded and sound in the faith. Is Jesus God part two? Another place that we can see, um, and you need to go back and look at part one, because the Bible clearly refers to Jesus as God. And you go back and look at part one, and you'll see John 1, 1, John, I put uh, John chapter 1, verse 14 with it. 
John chapter 20, 28, Titus 2, 13, Hebrews 1, 8, and 2 Peter 1, 1. So that's part one. So there's all the scripture references. And for the scripture references and this, and you'll see them because um, if you're watching by video, it's by slide. And we'll do a written uh, part to go with the audio. <clears throat> but in this teaching, part two, right, we're going to see, right, that we're going to see in Romans 10, cha uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13. Joel chapter 2, verse 32, Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, and Isaiah chapter 45, verse 23, we're going to show, uh, to prove the point here, what we're making, give you some witnesses on it. Now, the New Testament teaching that the divine titles of Jesus is Jesus God, part 2. The new covenant in the blood of the Lamb gives Jesus of Nazareth divine titles, divine titles. Such as, for example, it calls him Lord, calls him Lord. And often in the context where the use of the, the, this title, Lord, clearly represents and stands for the old covenant name, Yahweh. All right, next, we'll look at Romans 10, verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord, there it is, Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So here the scripture, New Testament scripture is saying, by confessing with your mouth, saying the same thing as what God says, and speaking it out of your mouth, that Jesus is Lord, that Lord Jesus, right? The Lordship, the Master, the rulership of Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will you will be saved. So it's a, it's a way to be saved, amen? For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, right? Um, and this goes into believing the gospel message that Jesus died for my sins. Uh, uh, and he suffered and died for my sins according to the prophetic scriptures announced by all the prophets. Amen. And that he rose the third day according to the scriptures. Amen. And the, by the prophets of Israel, what they had announced about. The Messiah, amen, that he accomplished, he fulfilled that. And in that, it says he'll suffer for our sins. He will be punished in our place. His soul becomes the guilt offering, the punishment, the guilt and the condemnation and the punishment for sin. And when punishment is paid, he'll be raised from the dead. And by believing in that, amen, with our heart, God imputes the righteousness of God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Lamb of God. He gives into us, places into us as a gift, Christ's own righteousness. And by believing that, God looks upon the heart and proclaims us as righteous with Jesus' righteousness. And our guilt and condemnation is gone. Well, now, we've got to grow up, amen? We've got to learn the scriptures. We've got to learn the truth and practice the truth, amen, to work out that which God put in. So here again, verse 10, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there's no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord, now here is Lord, the same Yahweh, the same Lord, is over all, is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of Jesus, or the name of Yahweh, or the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Amen. Now again, we're looking at the titles of Jesus. Here it shows him as the Lord Jesus. Amen? Yahweh, Jesus. The Lord saves through Messiah, Jesus, all who call upon them. They will not be put to shame. Now, amen. Now, let's go to another witness. 
And we'll look at the next scripture we're going to look at. Again, this is Is Jesus God? Part 2. We're looking at the divine titles and we're emphasizing Jesus is spoken of as Lord. Now we saw in Romans 10, 9 and 10. Now let's look at Joel, the prophet, chapter 2, verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now isn't that the same thing it's saying? In Romans 10, 9, and 10. Yes, it is. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be deliverance. As the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. Amen? Now, so this is salvation for the Jews, but it's also salvation for the Gentiles. In other words, the non-Jewish ethnicities. And we'll get into that later on preaching Christ, the prophecies concerning the work that the Lord Jesus, as God, accomplished to open up the covenant to all peoples throughout the earth, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord. So for the sake of this teaching, again, we're looking at the divine titles of Jesus and pointing out that one of those titles is Jesus as Lord. Now, Philippians chapter 2. Verse 9, Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Amen. It says, Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Now, nobody bows to a man. Right? Nobody should bow to idols. It's forbidden. Amen? But here God gave him a name and said every knee should bow to Jesus. And we'll go farther. Verse 10. That the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in the heaven. Even the heaven it says here. That means even the angels of God. Amen? And of those in the earth. That's all mankind. And of those under the earth those chain fallen angels, and even all those things in the place of holding for the wrath of God, all will bow their knee. In heaven and earth and below the earth, everything shall bow its knee. In verse 11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That Jesus, remember Christ is the uh, is the Greek equivalent for Messiah, the one who saves, the sent one, the the ruler who saves, amen? Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It glorifies God the Father. See, the Father had the plan. The Son executed the plan, amen, with the Holy Spirit. And when the Son went back to the Father, he received from the Father, God the Holy Spirit and sent him forth back in the earth to complete the work, right? Amen. That all men will repent, that all people will be converted, amen, that the gospel of the kingdom would go to them all, that God's desire that all would come to repentance, none perish, that all come to repentance, all would be converted, believing in and through the Messiah, uh, coming to the Father without, without, the, without sin, because Christ took it, Jesus the Messiah took it upon himself, as it's written, cursed is one who hangs on the pole, like Moses lifted up the serpent on the pole, and whoever would look with a long, steady gaze upon it would receive the revelation that God would one day put judgment for sins on the pole, amen, curse it, curse it thing, and be done with it, so that those who looked upon it, those who believed upon it, that they would have absolution and they would have a washing away. They would have a forgiveness and a remission and a wiping out of sin with its consequences so that once again, they could have a new heart, a new nature, and serve God and know God within them, each man himself knowing God personally. And that to the glory of the Father. Amen? So again, now it says, again, verse 10, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, of those in earth, and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now we see again, every knee bowing. Amen. Now let's go to the next verse. And we see this in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 23. 
I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return, that to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath, an oath and confess and say that Jesus is Lord in people. Those of us who call ourselves Christian, you got to understand when you say Jesus is Lord, you're taking an oath. When you when you when you say you turn away from sin and you're going to follow Jesus, amen. You're taking an oath. You're making a covenant. Amen. You're saying that he is Lord, that he's now in charge of your life, that he is now the ruler. Amen. You're taking an oath. Amen. So therefore, if we've taken an oath, then we need to keep our oath. If we made a covenant with God, we need to keep our covenant with God. And the one who endures to the end will be saved. Amen. Amen. So God is what? God, the called, the chosen. Amen. Who is it? God calls. And then certain people answer the call, but they leave. They answer the call, but they don't. They, they, they neglect this great salvation. They answer the call, but they don't come to the chosen. See, called, many are called, but few are chosen. But you have to continue in the choosing. Amen. Make your election sure, because then it's the faithful. The called, the chosen, and the faithful. He was faithful to the end will be saved. Amen. He who endures to the end will be saved. Amen. So is Jesus God? Well, here we just saw what? Four scriptures, New Testament and Old Testament. And basically it's saying the same thing. There's there's the principles of the word. There's the parts of the word that are exactly the same, pointing out that Jesus is Lord that Jesus is Lord in Christ, and that God gave him that name, and that every knee will bow to that name. You see? Every knee will bow, even in heaven and earth and below the earth. And Acts 3.19 gives us how God is doing this at the end of days, which we're in. Repent and be converted, that you get remission of sins, and then God will send times of refreshing from his presence. Amen? And that we'll wait patiently for his son to come from heaven or from the heavenly Zion to the earthly Zion. Amen. Jerusalem, Israel, he's coming to sit on his throne. Amen. Now, now, also too, it says there, he said to the son, sit down. Amen. In another place too, sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Who's his enemies? Antichrist, lawlessness, rebellion. God the Father is moving, and that's what the revelation is about. The Son is opening seals as 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 man and as God releasing judgments into the earth to cause man either to turn to God or to be hardened against God. He will have mercy on who will have mercy, he will harden who will harden, harden and turn them to the Lord. And and there'll be some that won't, and the devil won't. And the devil and his boys won't. And so that at the end, right, and then the Father will make every one of those things a footstool. See, people, we're in the shaking. We're in the birth pangs of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're in the final, we're coming into the final stages where the birth pangs, where God brings low every proud and lofty thing, every arrogant thing, brings it down. It falls to the ground in order. In order, amen, that the kingdom of the Son will be all that remains upon the earth. And Jesus will come and be enthroned in Jerusalem. Well, Lord bless people. Uh, this concludes part two. Again, uh, for the sake of, uh, here's a, I put up another slide for those of you looking by video and watching by video. You can find our website, one of our websites at rainoutreachtv.com. That's rainoutreachtv.com. And uh, be sure to catch all of these Is Jesus God series. And don't forget, other Preaching Christ series of teaching that will be under that category on our site. When we conclude this, we'll get into some other Preaching of Christ. We have another site that you can uh, get to uh, through that site where we've actually taught uh, 
the things that Jesus accomplished in the behalf of people upon the cross, certain exchanges and certain deliverances. And so uh, he took the evil do us and the con bad evil consequences, and uh, in place he gave us blessings. He took cursings and consequences of guilt, condemnation, and judgment upon himself in order to give unto us some good thing. And um, those teachings will get into that. And I will probably redo them in this format to make it easy for people, uh, you know, to assimilate them as they have the opportunity. Amen. Amen. Now, so be sure to catch it all again, rainoutreachtv.com. And then under category, which is in the navigation links, look under Preaching Christ. And then under Preaching Christ, you'll see, is Jesus God? Is Jesus God 1? Is Jesus God 2? And um, I'm trying to get the scripture references there for you too, especially for those listening by audio. And the audio only will be there. And we're trying to uh, figure out a way and try to have a way where people can download the audio. As well as they'll be able to print um, or capture in some way, um, you know, my little notes, my little references for this teaching in my notes. So it pro it'll be, um, you know, the, the note part probably won't be as uh, inclusive as when I actually begin to record it, you know, because uh, it's one thing, notes, study it, get ready, prepare it. It's another thing to just let the Holy Ghost speak and talk to the people once you get going. Well, this concludes again. This is Bishop Rich Thomas from RAIN, Rain Ministries, which is uh, RAIN is an acronym for Redemption Apostolic International Network. Amen. Preaching the redemption in Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth and believing God for the restoration of the church. Amen. Meaning apostolic book of Acts. Amen. That God the Holy Spirit will manifest himself like he did in the early church. Amen. I believe if we have right teaching, amen, and right practices, the power to go with the authority, the power of the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit will be manifest also, that the people's faith will rest in the power of God and not in the eloquence of men or philosophy. Again, Bishop Rich Thomas, I say to you, let the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. May God have mercy upon you. Amen. May God manifest his peace to you. May you know the love of God. Amen. May you know the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. May you know the love of the Son of God. May you know the fatherhood of God, I pray, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to all the work that he's accomplished for you. Let it be done unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next time, Bishop Thomas.